The next piece of my NeoVim config rewrite is completion and snippets. And the reason I put them together here is there is a little bit of a tie in in the configuration for both. And at first glance, it really doesn't make any sense, but hopefully after we work through this, uh, you'll be able to see why that is. And so basically what we have here is I'm using NVim comp and the main sort of other aspect of this is this plugin from Lemonade called Lewisnip. And I did the same strategy that I talked about in the first video here, where I like to have all of the completion stuff sort of for this situation, all getting loaded in my custom completion file. So let's, let's work through the custom completion and then I'll show you some of the stuff that we can do once we have all of these working together. So the first thing that we do is I set a few options that I particularly like for completion. You can sort of play around with whether you like no select for select or no insert versus insert. All of that, of course, is in complete opt and you can read through sort of what each one does and which one you like having. These are the ones that I've used for a long time, so I'm, I'm pretty used to it. Um, the next thing we do is we set up an, a plugin called LSP kind. This just kind of gives you some prettier icons and stuff inside of NVMe. Not a big deal. So then what are we going to do next? Next up, we need to set up NVIM comp. The main thing are, as we talked about a little bit before, this idea of sources for NVIM comp. We're going to provide the names of the sources, most important one being NVIM LSP. And then we need to give a few other ones if you want them. I like where uh, NVIM comp tries to complete paths for me relative to the current file and other words from the buffer. And then I may control N, control P, control Y, enjoyer, particularly the control Y. If you watch my kickstart video, you know that this is something that I like, but I like that as I'm typing, I can press control Y to actually select the per the item that I'm on right now. And you'll see why that that's really nice as we're going a little bit further in this video. But the next thing that we need to do is this is where I think if, if, if you don't know why this happening, it's very confusing. Why do we have to tell NVIM comp what to do with snippets? And so here's what happens. A in the language server protocol, there is a specification of how to send snippets sort of over the wire. And what this lets us do is it allows sort of an LSP to say, hey, here's the completion. But if you're able to handle it, I can actually give you additional information about where you might want to jump. For example, if you want to jump from parameter to parameter, you can do that with snippets. And so I'll show you how that plays out um, in an Elixir file in a second. Let's just finish just a few more little items here because uh, I want to show you those as we go as well. And so what we have is as we go through here, the only really other things I have here is basically the default situation for Lewis snip configuration. Here I have something that you, you might want to copy, something similar to this, although you could probably put this in plugin or after plugin, but I, I kind of like having it here, is I have a custom snippets folder and inside of here I put different file types for different languages. So here's my Elixir snippets. I find the Heeks templating language very cool, but impossible to type. Um, so you'll see here an element is like this less than percent equals and then the thing you want and then percent this I find it really hard to write okay so so I made myself a little snippet um, so that when I type el I can expand that to element and then I did the same thing for ei if I do a little bit more inside here of course I'll go ei eio uh, no, sorry, that's just leftovers from reading books to my kids. And so I'll probably do like an EF44 and a few other items, but I haven't done enough uh, Heeks templating to have a lot of opinions about what's worth having a particular snippet for. The important thing about this file, though, is I really like having this file where I start by clearing the snippets for a language, and then I add all of my snippets at the bottom here for that particular language. So if I want to test out new ones or whatever, all I have to do is source the file or for me leader leader x and it'll rerun this file and completely clear and then load up the new state for that file type which lets me quickly iterate on oh i think actually i want this one to go first or second this kind of idea right so so i think that that's really helpful um you can try and copy sort of that same idea as as, as well if you want. So basically all I do is I just look for the files that are in Lua custom snippets that end with Lua, and then I just load them all. 
So that's how I execute those um, on startup. And then here's where the two things that you're gonna see as we're walking through Lua snips, well, these are important. Control K is what I have to sort of go forward and control J is what I have to go back. And what does this look like as we're going? So if we're inside of a sort of file here, this is a Heeks template inside of Elixir. This is actually the template for this dashboard that I was building. And this is all live reloading right now. So if we write hello and save this, you'll notice that it says hello right here. And if I undo this and save again, it, it pops back out. What we can also do is we can add, now watch what I just did there, right? I typed E-L. And then I hit control K for me, control K is what I have to expand if there's anything to expand. So I hit control K and now I can use sort of the um, at user dot display. This is sort of the variables that get passed into this item. And so now it says teach TV, right? And so if I undo this and I undo this and I save it, it goes away. So that's what's going on there. That's that first snippet. How did I get it to do exactly that? So in this Elixir snippet here, I'm using the add snippets function from LuaSnip. I'm gonna do it for this file type. And then this is a list of snippets. So my first snippet here, that's this S, is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna format this. And basically format just says, format is wherever you see sort of these two braces together, that's going to be some snippet node and you pass those in sort of by location here. So what this says is type this part in, put whatever the first node is that we see, type this in, and then put me here for the last node. I is insert node. That just means that I want to be able to type something here. So you'll notice when I type EL here and I press control K, puts my cursor in the middle. I can type hello, right? That's here. And I can press control K again and I'm off and typing, right? So what's really nice there, right? Is that I don't have to sort of navigate over those or hop back into insert mode and out. I can just keep pressing control K to jump to the next spot in my snippet, right? So let's just walk through that one more time. I press control K to expand, hello. And now I can press control K again. Notice I'm still in insert mode the whole time. All I do is press control K that moves to my next insert node, hello. Okay, so that's sort of what's going on there with the snippets. If you want more info for that, I have some videos from a while ago. You can watch me look like Billy Mays. Um, I, just, I think it's pretty funny. So, so that's the first part of snippets, and that's sort of just Lua Snip. But I mentioned I was going to show how Lua Snip plays with NVIM Comp. And so let's just go here and we'll do a quick example of just something simple. I'm just going to basically rewrite this um, this fun this sort of statement here. And if you don't know what this does, that's okay. You'll be able to follow along with what I'm doing uh, regardless. The main thing is I can start writing a case statement. And what's cool is the LSP actually says, hey, I know what case st statements look like. And so I say, thank you. I press control Y to accept the completion. And you'll notice it put in a lot more than just the case, right? It actually put in sort of a whole a skeleton or a snippet, if you will, of what a case statement looks like. And so now what I can do is I can start typing my repo get by and the LSP knows what repo get by looks like. So I can accept this and then I can start typing theme song. And what I can do because we have this snippets plus completion power is I can press control K and it jumps immediately to the next parameter. Okay, jumps immediately to the next parameter. And now I could write sort of the thing that I wanted to write here with user.id. I can press control K again, and I jump forward sort of past this completion. I don't need to type anything else here, but I can press control K again. And now I jump all the way down to my pattern. So in this case, I just write nil. I'm gonna return nil. I don't wanna do anything. And then I can write for my next case, the theme song dot ID. So notice how we got this completion back from the LSP. First, we sort of got a snippet for what does a case statement look like. And then we got another snippet that was sort of embedded inside that says, here's the shape of this function, fill in the right dots. And so that's where, even though at first glance, it's, it is confusing, like why do we have 
doing snippets inside of my completion stuff. That's why is because completion engines or sources can send snippets. And instead of having NVIM comp also have to implement every possible snippet sort of language and everything, it has a hook that lets things like Lua snip, um, expand the snippets for it. So that's basically everything for completion. I don't have anything else going on. It's a relatively sort of straightforward one. I'm not a big fan of having one key do tons of different kinds of things. I know some people try and make it so tab can do like everything that I showed you. <coughs> Sorry. But in my mind, I really like being able to always remember, oh, control Y accepts the completion. Like, yes, right? And control K always moves me in the snippet. And then I really like control N and P always selects next and preview. And so in my head, it's so much easier to move around and do all of sort of these weird and interesting different combinations of stuff that you can get from a completion item. It, it's so much easier for me if one key always does one thing instead of really hoping that the way that I press tab is going to let this work, right? Because in the example I gave, it's kind of it, it's kind of complicated to know from sort of a one thing whether when we have this case, what should happen when I press tab here? I, I already have the function, right? Um, and so I think it's nicer that I can press control Y here. I can press control K and J to move between these items. I can even go out to here and move back between them. And so there's sort of this aspect where I think having one key for each really simplifies it and allows you to go blazingly fast. Thanks, everybody. Hope you liked the video. Bye.